Hello, Brawlers, and welcome to my review of episode 3 of Geogun Rising. I'm Haru Ren. So, a major spoiler warning if you haven't seen this episode yet, go back and watch it now because this review is going to contain a lot of spoilers. But if you have, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of Geogun Rising episode 3. The first part is a former thief and a laid back dude. We start with Dan having to stay after school to catch up with schoolwork because it's Dan, of course he does. And the Austin brothers are waiting for him, not knowing where he is. But. How do you not know he has to stay after school? Aren't you all in the same class? If you haven't guessed from the title, this is about Ajit and Pinsator. Immediately we get a look into Pinsator's character, and like the title suggests, Pinsator is a very laid back and airheaded Bakugan, constantly just falling asleep and taking things extremely slowly and lightly, but skipping ahead a little bit inside, Pinsator really takes offense to being confused for a scorpion when he's really a sand crab. So it makes him go into ultra instinct mode and his rage gives him super focus and strength if someone calls him a scorpion. So it's kind of how I get when someone calls me Korean when I'm Chinese. I'm joking, I don't get like that because I understand the confusion, but there are people that are going to be offended, so do be careful. There's your lesson for the day, kids. But Strada is eyeing the new Bakugan, yeah, he's back. Ah, what's that? Maybe there's something good over there. <gasps> Holy, the animation is actually super cute here. You know, disregarding Fenneca's personality, I can't deny how cute they made her. Oh god, now I want an actual toy of her now. And Strata captures Fennec and Farasco with a control whip? Uh, yeah. Seriously, look at the animations here, it's so smooth. Winton and Ajit roll out not Falconeer and not a scorpion to try and save Fennec and Farasco, but Pinsator is very oblivious to the situation. Bakugan! Stand! Chajo's voice kind of cracks here when he says that. I think it's now a running gag. It's not the first time we've ever heard of it. Hi there, Fennica! Ow! What's that about? Holy crap, Pensator is actually pretty funny. I actually really like his character the most, I think. So, G comes up with the brilliant idea of trying to imitate Strata and piss off Pensator to get him to turn into the Hulk. And what the heck, Ajit's animation here is super funny. And Pensator goes on a murder path to get to Strata. You're going to pay. Holy crap, what was that sound? I thought it was my TV at first, but my god, Dan Petrona Jivek, what was that? <laughs> and you know what? Pentator chasing Strider around like he's going to murder him all cartoonish like is pretty hilarious. Seems like they're establishing Pentator as sign of kind of a comedic relief, but angry dude of the group, and you know what? I kinda like it. Pinsator throws Strata in a way that would totally kill him, but this is a cartoon, of course it doesn't. And it seems that G and Pinsator are the only ones that actually get on the same page. Though, to be fair, an airhead laid-back guy like Pinsator could get along with anybody. We continue with the next part, which is My Name is Shaktar. Dan, Winton, Lee, and Ajit have to clean up after that battle since the drum isn't working and can't do it for them. Though, I'm surprised Farasco and Fenica are helping since they're rebellious children. Oh yeah, you want to know where Shun's been this entire time? Because in case you haven't noticed, he wasn't in the previous part. He and Shaktar at an underwater research bunker. You call that weak wiggling swimming? Uh, uh, put some muscle into it. Swim with all your might. Okay, now we get Shaktar's character. A wannabe drill sergeant kind of reminds me of Tyranno Hasselberry from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Shun meets with Masato, who reveals he's not going to put effort into trying to fix the drone. That's very out of character for him since he really believed in Bakugan and Serpentees in the first season, went through a major character change like that, and all of a sudden it just dropped at an instant here. And I've heard there's a movement trying to ban all outdoor battles anyway. Gee, I wonder who could be leading that movement. Foreshadowing much? Instead, Masato reveals the company has been working on a satellite defense system to protect the planet from aliens entering the solar system in the wake of havoc. Holy Jesus, Shun's company is literally working on a super weapon. You seriously can't tell me Kazami International isn't now a weapons manufacturing company? This seems like a government ordered job. But really, Masato just also doesn't want to rely on Bakugan to help defend the Earth. Again, very out of character for him from his transformation in the first season. But then McHugh steals the controls for the satellite. Seriously, you can't even hide the fact that it's McHugh if you tried. Lock down the facility! Do not let him escape! And you still let him escape. McHugh selling that thing on the black market is going to be worth, like, billions. It's a space super weapon that can kill whatever at an instant. 
to the right buyer, they'd be able to control the world. Holy, it really seems like the episode with Shun and Sharktar has the most stakes involved. Even if they don't actually directly mention it. I know you humans are weak, so I'll take over from here anytime! Thanks, Sharktar. You just casually ignored the insult there? Sharktar goes after McHugh and destroys his sub along with the controls for the satellite. The escape pod won't eject! Holy Sharktar, you seriously left them for dead? The show is getting really dark, real slowly. Charge force! You can call it whatever you like, that's Hydro Pump. Sharktar, it seems like he has a stance that humans are weak, and it seems like as any other drill sergeant is, just hate weak opponents or anyone that is weak. But really, Sharktar only was able to defeat Cycloid's constant spamming of monstrous blaze because Shun had to help him, telling him to swim like jellyfish to avoid attacks. This is the same episode where Vasado says that humans are trying to stop relying on Bakugan to defend Earth, but thanks to Shun and Sharktar's teamwork, it reminds him of the bond between humans and Bakugan. Really clever turning two situations and overlapping the overall message. After McHugh gets away, Masato says the company will investigate how to fix the drone, and I guess they just cancelled the super weapon project. And the episode ends. So, that was episode 3 of Geogon Rising. Let me know what your rating of the show was in the comments down below. This was another good episode establishing the characters of Pensator and Sharktar, and actually these stories used in this episode was executed rather well. I did get genuine laughs from the Pensator episode, and Sharktar's episode in my eyes actually got a very high stake involved, which made it pretty cool to watch. McHugh stealing a super weapon to sell to someone potentially dangerous like North Korea or something? Oh god, that would be a nightmare material. I do like Cory Doran's performance for Pensator, and I do really like that the animations have drastically improved for this season. My only real criticism is that maybe instead of Masato, it could be Toshi or Shun's dad, because this thing about not relying on Bakugan's help anymore or fixing the drone seems very out of character for Masato, since he went through an amazing character development and change in the first season. Overall though, I thought this was a fine episode, and I'll give it a low Bakutastic. Thank you for watching this review of Geogon Rising. Be sure to press the thumbs up and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren, and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye!